This is very, very important because psychology and one of the big lies, one of the big, big lies of psychology, which is itself, by the way, a form of mind virus, is to tell you that somehow you were born with some biological disease that is affecting your mind. This is simply an out-and-out lie. Yes, there may be things in your body that may cause an accentuation, but the mind itself is not born with any predisposed illness. It is not. It's the same. What psychology is doing is what the Vatican did for 1500 years. The Vatican got us to believe, and many people still do believe this, that we were born with somehow some original sin, that we carry the sins of our parents around with us. Well, psychology is trying to do exactly the same thing, and it's doing it in order to poison and sell poisons to our children. Ritalin. How on earth did bright, active children suddenly become children with an illness that needed to be subdued and turned into robots? This is another reason why the cognitive law is taking time because when it's finished, so will psychology. When this is ready, this will herald the end of the madness of unrebutted claims and falsities and mind virus running rampant with no cure, no remedy and no sense out there. Psychology is, is writing checks its, its ego can't cash. It is complete and utter rubbish. So a mind virus is a pathogen. It is an illness. But it is an illness of the information. It is something acquired. It has certain things that it chooses to do. Well, let's have a look at ego for a moment. We're talking about mind viruses. And what do we mean by ego? Well, under, the, under cognitive law, we define ego as, ego as a, a word used to define the self-identification of itself and more specifically in reference to a highly complex and an ancient mind virus specifically designed to keep the lower self distracted and disconnected from the higher self and the divine self. Let me just repeat that last bit. Specifically designed to keep the lower self distracted and disconnected from the higher self and divine self. Well, why would a mind virus be so obsessed in keeping us disconnected from our higher self and our divine self. Now, what we mean there is under the model of cognitive law and under many models you've heard of mind, body, spirit, so this is not new. And nothing I said in terms of a lower self, higher self and divine self is unique to Eucadia. It's not. It's a common belief. Many, many people have this belief. So, here with ego, we see a specific goal, a specific uh, job of ego to separate. Well, let's keep going and let's, let's try and understand a bit more about ego. All higher order life forms possess a form of self. Dogs, I, our children are our cocker spaniels and I can tell you that they know exactly who they are and what they are. Absolutely, have a full range of emotions. And I'm not saying that we humanize our dogs but in their interaction it's very clear they communicate they have emotions they get depressed they get happy and these are not reflexes all higher order life forms possess a form of self however the homo sapiens species is unique in possessing the sophisticated self-defining and self-referencing mind virus known as ego well Let's talk about this. Ego is not the same as self, even though in Latin the word ego means I. It means in Latin self, but it's not the same. Self denotes the identity and unity of three minds, three wills and three self-identities. So true self embraces our divine. 
embraces our high and embraces our lower. When I say to you, and when you've sent off an ecclesiastical deed poll, and you've written divine immortal spirit, and you've embraced your divine, you've embraced your higher, and you've embraced the fact that you're in a flesh vessel, then you're being true to yourselves, your three selves, your three wills, your three minds, united as one. But this is not what ego wishes to be, so ego can't be the true self. What ego seeks to do as a mind virus is in fact usurp the higher functions and assume it self as a supreme and singular I. What ego says is, I am in the divine. I am the higher and I am the lower. Okay, so let's, let's go through. Let's get more. The prime directive of ego, its prime directive as a virus, is to keep the mind separate from each other and from the unique collective awareness of UCA. That is its prime directive, to keep us separated, to keep us divided. Now, what's one of the prime directives of the English in their empire? Divide and conquer. What's one of the prime directives of other empires? Divide and conquer. Why? Because if you divide, it means you're weakened. And that's exactly what ego is doing. The pure expression of ego, the pure expression, is the manifestation of unrestrained gratification of pleasure and desire without honour, without virtue and without empathy and with no conception or acceptance of responsibility for the consequence. One of the extraordinary things of ego, when one is purely dominated by ego, not only are those people separated from the higher and divine self, meaning they are not connected, they can't be connected to the unique collective awareness, they can't be connected to the one. They are operating wholly within the clutches of ego. One of the extraordinary things of ego is ego exhibits a characteristic that is wholly reptilian and not mammalian. Because under ego, ego suppresses a fundamental part of the emotions of all mammals. We're about to talk about emotions in a moment and you'll see one of the key emotions is the willingness to protect your young, to protect others, to lay down your life for the benefit of others. This is actually a feature of all the mammal species, yet it is not a feature of the reptile. And yet it is a characteristic a shining characteristic of ego. So I leave the question to you. If ego is an ancient, ancient mind virus and its pure performance is reptilian, then who first gave us ego? So we have ego. And we see that ego mimics the mind by creating lower ego, higher ego and super ego. Lower ego harnesses the impulsive selfish emotions directed towards the immediate sensory self-gratification. So the lower ego is absolutely geared towards satisfying our sensory self-gratification. Higher ego is different. Higher ego mimics the higher mind or intellectual ego. It utilizes the selfish and in some cases even utilizes that unselfish emotions towards goal achievement and peer public recognition. So congratulations, I wrote that, I did this, I'm the one, I'm telling you, me, me, I, I. It's, it's the thing that drives us to say, well, I hear that, but I want to make it mine. I want people to know that I did this. That's higher ego. And then of course, super ego, also known as spiritual ego, seeks to manipulate the claimed unselfish emotion stimulus, stimulus directed towards appearance of public benefit for acknowledgement and praise as the living saint or, surprise, surprise, the Messiah, the Messiah syndrome. And you see that. You see people saying, oh, I'm not a Messiah, I'm just doing the best I can. And you see this over and over. Well, as I've said to you, what we do with this 
and the importance of Ucada is that it's an open source model. It's got nothing to do with me. Yes, I start things, but it's got everything to do with you. So to conquer ego, the lower, the higher, the super, is to ensure that we can be free of ego. And if we can be free of ego, then we have conquered this ancient, ancient mind virus. Let's move to emotion for the moment. Because I've mentioned emotion, and we're still going to deal with the question of virtue. I'm going to go through another section now in terms of emotion. And I hope you're finding as we're going through the information useful to you. And I hope I'm not talking too quickly either. Uh, remember, at the end of the call, please, um, if you go star rate, uh, then I will take you your questions directly. Or if you type the word question in capitals, then I will track those questions. So emotion, this is another section. Take a long time to go through this. You know, emotion, it's... It's a key feature of our life. It's part of our life. Our life is is very much related to the positive, the negative, the highs, the lows, the light, the dark. What do we mean by emotion? Well, here's another technical but important definition. An emotion is a highly complex physical and cognitive biofeedback state derived through the production of involuntary physiological hormones Reactions producing associated subconscious programs in predictive response to heightened external or internal sensory information. Wow. Well, I tell you what, that's a, that's a long-winded definition, but in it, it contains all the elements. So it is connected to the mind. It is also a physiological, hormonal, and it is predictive. In other words, emotions are occurring before the conscious mind is aware of them. And it is performing some predictive, self-fulfilling process. Well, let's look at some of our ancient biological emotions because this is where we start to see a connection between ego. So the ancient biological purpose of emotions is to provide rapid recall to relevant subconscious programs or instincts associated with heightened external or internal sensory information considered significant. Now, sometimes you'll hear that psychology will say there's only two, fight or flight, and this is absolute rubbish. In fact, there are six. There are six ancient biological emotions, and they are Anxiety, attack, escape, protect, arouse, and pleasure. I'll punch them into the conversation so you can see them. Anxiety is the base emotion. Anxiety prepares the body, prepares the body and the mind for the subsequent emotion. So it's a holding pattern. It's a preparation. It gets the body ready for attack or escape protect or arouse, pleasure. So it becomes the base. And of course, from anxiety, this is the bedrock when we start to get into that word fear we spoke of. So the six are anxiety, attack, escape, protect, arouse, and pleasure. Anxiety, we mean angst. Attack, we mean fight. Escape, we mean flight. Protect, we mean defend. Arouse, we mean the stimulation of courtship. And pleasure, we mean the self-stimulation. Enjoying, uh, scratching your back, you know, picking your nose, being a primate. I mean, these are ancient biological emotions. Now, it doesn't take much to see that when they created psychology and when those in power saw the, really laid, sat down and actually worked out forensically the tools of power, that what they did was they overlaid a series for the lower ego, a series of masks on those. They pressed the button on those. And let's look at those buttons that they pressed. So the six cloaks, the six tools to feed ego on top of anxiety, 
they created the false emotion of fear.